everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our on-demand webinar, An Introduction to Drake Accounting. My name is Lori Correa, and I am one of the instructors for this software, and I'm also the training program manager for the Drake Education Department. Our learning objectives today will be how to set up the firm information and the user setup, explain how to set up your clients, we'll also identify and discuss the modules that are available in Drake Accounting, and then we're going to wrap up today's discussion with the available training opportunities we have with Drake Accounting. After installation, the first thing that you're going to notice when you open up Drake Accounting is you're going to see the tip of the day. And you can choose to unselect or deselect this box so that you don't see it all the time. But I suggest if you are getting familiar with Drake Accounting for the first time, you might want to leave that on because this is a great opportunity to learn and pick up new things as you go along and get familiar with the software. Now, if you do decide to turn this off at startup, you can always turn it back on. You'll see that there's a file menu on the left and there is tip of the day underneath the help menu. So you can turn that on and off whenever you would like to do that. We are going to get started today with firm setup. So on the far left of your screen, you will see a bunch of menu items and we will go through some of these, not all of them today for the sake of time, but we will go through some of the setup features. Let's begin with the firm setup. So on the far left, you'll click that expander icon to firm and we're gonna go to firm information setup. So what you're going to see here is the firm name, the contact information, all of the demographics. A little bit further down, you'll see that there is an e-file setup section, and we won't get into all of this today, but just know that a majority of the setup for e-filing 941s will have to happen on this screen, so you will want to revisit it. We have lots of tutorials and things to be able to guide you through all those processes, and I will talk about that before we wrap it up today. On the right hand side of this screen, you will see that it's got your PTIN, the federal EIN number of your firm, your EFIN and your Drake account number, and your e-file password. That's really important, especially when you are um, setting up your serial number and getting it activated. So you'll want to make sure that that information is correct. If you're not sure where that's located, if you log into the support site, it is located on your account information page. The next item that you'll see is the TCC. This is important if you want to e-file 1099s. We do that using the IRS FIRE system, but you do have to apply for a TCC or a transmitter control code. If you click TCC right from the screen, it is going to open up a knowledge base article that gives you a little bit more information on that so that you can know or will know exactly what is needed or required in order for you to complete that process. And we do have links all throughout the software to be able to guide you along the way in case you need some additional assistance. The next field is the BSO user ID, and that is the Business Services Online website for the Social Security website. We also have a link to a tutorial here, and this is actually directly from uh, the Social Security Administration giving you guidance on how to use their site. So I think that is great that we were able to implement that for everyone who is learning how to use Drake Accounting from the, for the first time. All right, the next um, item that you will see here is to automatically overwrite forms. You can choose the maximum number of forms per period that you can overwrite. 
The next item is automatically backup client files and you can select whether you want to automatically backup client files at the start or end of a client session. The default number of backups per client is 10 and Drake Accounting applies this on a first in first out basis and to change the number of backups you can just simply edit that field. The next section is check printers and if you are using Micker checks or a Micker printer and this might be for someone who does a large volume of printing checks. Sometimes you have a special printer that does magnetic ink and it is recognized by the banks. Now it's my understanding um, as we've talked to customers throughout the years that they the banks are taking them anyway regardless of whether they have the magnetic ink but don't quote me on that that's just something that we're hearing out in the field the next item is pre-printed checks so you want to go ahead and select where those pre-printed checks will be coming from and make sure that you have that set up appropriately. The other thing at the very bottom here on the left is EFTPS setup. And this is not something we're going to get into today, but if you will be using EFTPS, we have a little bit more information on that. And again, we have tutorials to give you some guidance. Once you have completed your firm setup, simply click Save in the upper right hand portion of this window. Now that we have completed the firm setup, let's talk about how we navigate through Drake Accounting. So Drake Accounting uses a tree view navigation system, identical to the Windows native system. The plus on the very left expands and then at the same time, it will also collapse that menu. On the top right of the screen, you will notice that there is a button and that button is for reports. You can easily get to all of the reports, the different types, and then all of the other filter report options. To the right of that is a link to our video link. So as I mentioned earlier, we have lots of tutorials available. Let me just click through that and show you. So when you, when you select that button, it's going to bring up all of our Drake Accounting tutorials. So that is really a great resource for you and you won't have to get out of the software to be able to access that. The next icon there is to log out, and then there is a Windows calculator that you can launch right from this window. The next item that I would like to talk about is our user setup. So you will find that underneath firm and then user setup. And I have some in here set up already, but let me just review what I have here. Um, myself, I've got my login as the owner. I've got my email address, my full name, and you'll notice that owner and administrator and user are all grayed out. And that is because I have set myself up as all of those items. Of course, your security questions. If you need to restrict modules from a user, you would simply select the one that you would like them to not have access to and then use those icons, those arrows to bring, to be able to bring that information over to the inactive modules. Some items that are only appear for the owner and uh, these options, again, these are just for the owner. Not everyone has access to this tab. The first thing that you'll see here is advanced security options. You can choose to use multi-factor authentication when logging in. Just know that when you select it here, you are selecting it for all of the preparers or the other bookkeepers in your office. You can choose how often the password frequency is reset. And then you can choose to have a different login image if you want. Um, so you can just simply replace that with any other JPEG that you have. Um, on the right hand side, we have some additional information and you would only be um, utilizing this if you were prompted to do so by our customer support. Um, but if you ever needed to have your files rebuilt or anything like that, you would call us and we would walk you through that process. 
for options, you can see that underneath the appearance, you can mask the client IDs. You can choose the alternate desktop view, and let me explain what that is. If you are brand new to Drake Accounting, this will not matter to you. However, we may have someone who used client write-up years ago, and, and if they preferred the look of that, which was a lot different than what you're seeing here with Drake Accounting, but if they want to see all those icons that they're used to seeing, we can make that happen. Um, but again, that's it's been a while now. I don't know how many people um, find benefit um, or use in that. Uh, the next item is client health view. So if you want to turn this on, every time you open up a client, you're going to get a snapshot of their, the health of that client. So uh, their expenses and their payroll and different things like that without having to dig too far deep into the program. You can also show your patch notes after updating, and I suggest that you do that. And the reason being, um, there's a lot of times there are patches that go out routinely for various things. It could be a specific state with uh, tax rates or anything like that. So if you are waiting on a patch or you maybe have a ticket into our support team and they're trying to resolve something for you and they're telling you it's going to go out in a patch, you will know for sure if it did if you have this turned on. So whenever you log in, right where I showed you the tip of the day, you'll also see the patch notes. There is also a tooltip delay. So as we hover over various items, you'll see that um, you will see a tooltip that will appear and you can choose how often that that is up there for. Your check printers, again, if you're using Micker checks, you'll want to tie that to the appropriate printer and the same thing with your pre-printed checks. Your print preview, if you would like to see a pre print preview of all of your checks before they print, you can simply select that box and that will stay turned on until you turn it off. There is also an option to enable blank check printing. You can alphabetize your node data for letters and then default to active client state rates for your state rates, okay? So that's kind of everything that I see under my login. Um, let's go ahead and go to a front desk user. And I just uh, kind of played around with this a little bit this morning before I'm recording this, just to kind of give you um, an overview of what it would see. Say you have somebody just working in your office and they don't necessarily uh, need access to your AR or your AP um, or your bank account information. So there are some restrictions that you can put in place. So the first thing that you would do is, of course, assign them a user ID, an email, and their full name, you would indicate that they are a user. And in blue just below that, it tells you that normal users have basic permissions. They can edit and view their own information, edit all journals, but disallow posting transactions, etc. So you can go ahead and um, read that at your leisure. But the next uh, item here is restrict modules. And maybe this is the one where you say, okay, I don't want Sally to have access to my firm, my receivables, my payables, my on the fly and my setup information. So again, as I mentioned earlier, you just highlight the item you want to bring over into the inactive module window and you can do that by using these arrows. So just like that. I just put firm back over there and I click the right arrow and the, that adds it to the inactive module list. The options are identical to the ones you saw when I was under my login, and um, also there is some journal options here. So if you're going to be using the bookkeeping portion of Drake Accounting, you may want to go in here and just kind of see the different setups that they have available, different ways that you can um, customize this experience just for you as a specific user so that everyone doesn't have to have the same settings. Obviously, everyone has their own way of doing things and we like to make that as easy as possible for everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and save what I have here and exit that screen. Before I get into the next menu item, I want to point out a couple of icons on the client selector screen. So the first one you'll see here is a backup. So I know that earlier on, I had selected, 
I believe that I wanted to save my backups automatically at the start and end of every client session. Now, if you are in the middle of working on a client and you just want to take a snapshot of right where you are at that moment, it's a manual backup and that would be performed by clicking that little CD looking, it kind of looks like one of those CDs from uh, back when we used to use those little three and a half, um, for those of you who remember those. Um, now, a little bit further down, you'll notice that there's now a note here. Client last backed up on 120 2023 at 1145, and that is the time of the recording. So you will see whenever you do back up, you'll know exactly when that occurred. The next item that you'll see here is you can add a client from here. And we'll get into this in just a second, but you can get to a client and add a client from this menu on the left, but you can also easily just click that plus icon and do it there. The next icon you'll see here, this is more like a rebuild client list button. And you will probably rarely see this highlighted, but if you've worked with customer support on a particular file, maybe we've had to help you fix a couple of things and sent that file back to you, we may need you to rebuild that client list and at that time it would be highlighted for you to be able to do that. It's not something that would occur every day, so do not worry about it too much. The next icon is station settings. So if you're running on a network, it's important that you have it set up correctly and this will guide you through that process. Okay, going back to the left side of the menu, I want to go to file and then setup panel. And this is going to help you know if you have what you need set up. So you can see that there are green check marks letting me know that I have selected my employee options, my deductions and benefits, my employee setup, my accounting options, my chart of accounts, payables, receivables. You can see that there's a couple items not set up here. And then financial. You can see that the direct deposit setup has set up and payment methods are set up, but not check designer and not check and stub options. So that's a good place for you to go just to make sure that you have everything you need set up before you get started. The next item that you'll see under this file menu is import. So when you click import, for those of you coming in for from a different software, you'll want to come here. If you are a QuickBooks user, this will guide you through the process of importing your QuickBooks information. We also have one for Sage 50. We also have something for Easy Accounting and then Dillner's Tax. So those are the items that we have available as kind of like a setup wizard. Um, now, aside from that, we do have a way to import your uh, information if you're coming from any other software. And we do that through um, client import and export. And I will point those out to you here in just a little bit. Now, as I mentioned, if you are coming in from any other software and you want to still be able to get that information into Drake Accounting, you can do that by going to the menu on the left. You're going to go to Tools and then Spreadsheets. And then the first thing you're going to want to do is export the spreadsheet. And the reason that you're doing that is you need to get that information on there. So you will select the appropriate spreadsheet that if, you, if it's employees you're trying to get in there. And then there is also a filter to drill down into what information needs to be on there. Once you have that, you're going to fill that out, save it on your desktop, and then you're going to go through the import process to be able to get that information in here. So it's relatively easy. We've got tutorials to guide you as well as uh, some knowledge base articles to make that as easy as possible. All right, now we are ready for our next objective, which is how to set up the clients. So if you'll recall from the home window here, I've got this plus icon. If I click that, this is going to allow me to go ahead and put in this client information. So you will see, let me point out to you real quick, any place in the software where, where you see a red validator, 
you'll see that it gives you a note and it tells you it is required and you have to fill this out. So if you are ever in the middle of setting up a client and you think that you've breezed through the whole screen but it's still saying something's missing, at the top of these, each of these items here that you see here, wherever these red validators are, you will also see it at the top so that you can easily identify and drill down to where that information is missing and get that in. So I'm going to pause this just for a second and uh, get this information in here and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got all my information in here. So I have put in a client code. I've got the name of the business. I've got the address, the contact person, the contact title, the email address, as well as phone information, EIN information, and et cetera. All right, and that is all underneath the contact information tab. The next tab is benef business information tab. So if your deposit frequency is monthly or semi-weekly, you would make that selection here. You would also want to indicate what type of business type this is. This is a 1040, 1120, 1120S. You've got some options there. You also want to make sure that the start of year date is displaying properly. And the reason this is important is because we can actually have this information go into the Drake documents and that is formally called the Drake Document Manager for those of you who've been using Drake Tax for a really long time. So as long as that start year is correct, and when I get to that section, I'll point out how you can actually save that information in there, but you'll want to make sure that this is the current date, and it is, and that's great. The um, next item here is the accounting method. You will want to Use the cash or accrual method of accounting. Select cash accounting method if you wish to record revenues and expenses when the money actually changes hands. Or the accrual accounting method is when the revenue and expenses are recorded when a transaction occurs versus when the payment is received or made. So you'll want to make that sure that you make the appropriate selection there and you'll want to not change that during the course of a year. That would lead to a lot of complicated kind of a mess. So you want to make sure that you know exactly what you want to do and kind of stick with it for the year. There is also a couple of other options for private family leave insurance and private disability plans. If either or both of those are needed, you'll indicate the associated plan numbers. The next item is divisions. So we want to go ahead and create those and it's real easy to do that. So you can click this new button, which I lovingly refer to it as the sun button. And you can put in a division code and your division title. And let's see if I put administration. And let's go ahead and put in another one. And you can see that that is just going to continue to create that. And maybe I have sales. Um, let's do another one. And maybe I have a maintenance crew. All right, so that gives you an idea. You can have an unlimited number of divisions here. This is really helpful for reporting purposes. So uh, please take advantage of this. Um, this will really help you whenever you're trying to really hone in on your data and your numbers. Now let's take a look at the state tab. You're going to select the client's state from the left from this list. And I've got North Carolina selected. And you'll want to make sure you've got your state ID, state unemployment, state tax entity code in here. And also if you're going to be e-filing for that state, you'll want to make sure that that is included. Okay, the next tab is Drake Documents. And this is the one where I was telling you that if you were using Drake Documents with your tax program, you can also use it for Drake Accounting. So you can select the location of where that is. All of this information in blue will pre-fill right below it uh, to tell you where the file name is and all of that. Um, on the bottom here is what's important. Save documents to Drake documents. Do you want to do this manually or automatically? So what, what's going to happen, and you'll see as you begin to use Drake Accounting, but whenever you're doing reports, it will actually display and uh, a reporting feature that is 
looks very much like a PDF. And there's lots of opportunities for creating reports. So if you want this to do to be generated automatically, you would select that. Or if you just want to do them manually because there's only a few different reports that you care about, um, either one is fine. Just to know that that is a good option for you and um, it will be available for you in the Drake documents. All right, the next tab is e-file options. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this for this for this webinar because it's a little bit more in depth and we can certainly cover this more in a tutorial, but this is where all your e-file options are. So you'll want to make sure you visit this, especially if you're going to be e-filing your 941s um, and things like that. You'll want to make sure you revisit this tab. All right online payment. This information is needed if there is a balance due for various respective forms. You would make sure that this information is filled out so that that process can take place. Federal form setup. This is where you're going to set up all your W-2s, uh, any kind of 1099 information, all of that. So if you're going to be doing end of the year forms, and most of you probably will, you'll want to make sure that you come back here and revisit this as it gets closer to the end of the year. The next item is notes. And you can put your notes here. Okay, so you can go ahead and put your notes in here um, as it pertains to your client. This is fantastic, especially for auditing purposes, make sure you're tracking all your information in here. And you can select this checkbox at the bottom to append the date and the time. And that will go ahead and set you up for success there. Now, now that I have put in a little note, I want to show you something. So I'm gonna save what I have here and I will come back to what I'm trying to tell you, but I know what's going to happen next. And that is our chart of accounts. And so let me get through that part real quick. So right now we are just saving. Now, if you're going to be using the chart of accounts, and I presume most of you will um, be using the bookkeeping function as well, we have some various different ways you can set up your chart of accounts. So you can set them up by templates, which of course is probably the most easiest thing to do. And you can see the different templates that we have available on the right hand side. Now you can also copy an existing client chart of accounts. And let me tell you why that would be uh, a good option. I know that there are going to be customers that you have or clients that you have that have a specific way of doing things. Or you may have spent a great deal of time working on how you want that chart of account to display. Now, if you have done that and you've already put in that kind of work, you can copy the existing chart of accounts into a new chart of accounts. So if you have something that you're very fond of and you don't want to deviate from it, you can certainly do that. You can also customize from here and you can even choose to set up the chart of accounts later. So I'm going to go ahead and select templates. I've got my accounting method here selected. I'm going to leave it at 1040 and I'm going to click next. It takes just a minute for this to generate and you can see now all of your chart of accounts displays. I'm going to exit here and I wanna take you back to the client selector screen. So a moment ago when I was filling out that little brief note for Nantahala Candles, I wanted you to be able to know that there's an easy way to be able to access that note. So you can see that next to Nantahala Candles, there is a little box that appears. It says a client, you have a note on file. You can click that and see this note very easily. So you don't have to get in and out and in and out. You can and just slip, simply go to that note um, and that would be great especially if you are working midway through a, a client and you have to get pulled away and you needed to make a note about where you are or what you need to do that will make your job way more efficient to be able to utilize that feature since this is a webinar on you know general setups I want to take you back over here to this left menu item and spend a few minutes just talking about the various items that we have here. We uh, went to file a little bit, we went to firm, and on firm we did the firm information setup and the user setup, but you can see there are lots of other items here available. 
Um, something that you may be utilizing is direct deposit setup. We partner with CodaPay to be able to offer that service for you. So that is where you would set up that information. Here is your EFTPS information for tax deposit, export, import, and enrollment. Letters. So we have spent a little bit of time here working on some letters for you. This is going to work very similar to what you are used to using in um, Drake Tax. So we tried to make sure we implemented that information in here for you as well. We also have something that was relatively new in the last year, I believe, and that is creating report sets. So you can create and generate those report sets for here. So if you want a client set and a firm set or what have you, whatever your strategy is, you can accomplish that here. Uh, you can get to your reports from here and we even have a audit log viewer. So you can see I'm the only one who's been in here, but you can see the audit type and the date and time that I have been in this particular client. So that is great for you as an owner or an administrator to be able to go back and review. Um, if you have to go back and track down, if there was an issue, you know exactly when and where the issue took place and how to address it. All right, the next item, let me collapse these fields here. The next one is financial, and this is where you will uh, fill out your bank deposit information. If you have MICR checks, and I talked about that early on, if you need to do a calibration, you can do that here. A check designer, if you are going to be writing checks at all, you need to come here and fill this out. This is just something that needs to be done. Now, a lot of this setup will um, just bring forward from year to year, but if it's your first time using Drake Accounting, you'll have to put in a little time, as you would with any program, just getting it all set up. But this is where you would set up your check designer, uh, your check and stub options, and then your payment methods. All right. Underneath client, you see that we did add a client, but we used our plus sign from the home window to actually get to that place. But you, you also have some other options here. You can edit the information. Um, you can go to the health of this company, which really has nothing in it right now, so there's really nothing to display. But this is the type of information you would see on the health screen. You would see expenses, revenue, monthly revenue, um, and on to the right, there is a chart function, so you can actually use that as well. Um, you can do a backup and restore from here. You can delete, you can update a prior year, and you can export certain, certain lines uh, from the chart of accounts into Drake Tax. So that is good to know. Now underneath employees, we have uh, options, deductions and benefits, employee setup, payroll. We will be working on a payroll webinar as well, and that will get into this a lot more detail. Underneath accounting, Everything that you would think should be here is here. So this is your chart of accounts, your transactions, if you had a year in close, your bank rec, all of that will be underneath the accounting, feature, uh, the, the accounting menu item. Payables, if you'll be using that, that is where that's located. Receivables, the same way. And then underneath tools, we have program updates, blank forms, and let me show you the blank forms here real quick. So um, by default, you'll see that it is a federal uh, 941, but you have a drop list here that you can display any type that you need to display. As far as states go, we've got state information as well for all states. All right. And we do try very hard to keep everything in here that you need as far as blank forms goes. Drake documents, I touched on that a little bit. Uh, you can use mailing labels. Uh, you can go to review reports from here, um, spreadsheets, uh, client transfer. Let me explain what this is a little bit. So if you uh, are working in a client and maybe you hit a snag, you ran into a problem, something's not right, or you're having trouble figuring out how to do something, we would more than likely ask you to send your file to us. And how you can easily do that is by clicking that client transfer utility. You're going to select connect 
and you'll see that this is our Drake server on the top and everything that's on your computer would be displayed on the bottom. So if I wanted to connect and I needed someone in our support division to be able to see my file, I would select it and I would upload it to the Drake server. When that process is completed, you would see it display up here. And then that whoever is helping you with your issue can easily get to it and look at your file and they'll be able to see exactly what you're seeing. This is invaluable. Um, things have changed so much. So I've been working with Drake for 15 years and when I first started here, we had to do some very creative things to be able to get your files to us and it was very time consuming. So this uh, really alleviates a lot of that uh, time and guesswork and um, it's good for you to know where it's at in case you ever need to use it. Uh, the next item is e-filing. Of course, we do have e-filing for all of these forms. Uh, there are processes uh, in place to be able to walk you through all of those things, and they can be found in many of our video tutorials. Again, that is on the top right side of your screen. That links you to all of the video links that we have. Um, then there is an on-the-fly section. On-the-fly is fantastic. You might have only, you, know, you might have a few people that only come in at the end of the year and says, hey, I want you to generate these forms. So if that is you, or if you even know what I'm talking about, you can actually get to those on-the-fly forms here. You, you can set these up with minimal setup information and be able to do exactly what you need to do without going through all of that intensive setup. So make sure that you know where that is located. And again, that is the on the fly forms. The next item is setup. And we have some various different ways that you can set up your reporting. So we've got report options. And um, of course, you want to come back here and just read these at your leisure. But you can also do custom labels and headers and footnotes to be able to customize your reports in uh, the best way you can. Electronic signatures. I don't have one set up, unfortunately, today to be able to demonstrate this for you. However, uh, just so you know, if you've been with Drake Tax for a little bit, or if you're familiar with um, signature pads at all, we actually work with Topaz, Scriptel, and Wacom signature pads. So you can go ahead and capture those signature on a signature pad, save it in here, and be able to use that wherever it's needed. Perhaps it's on a 941. Or et cetera, but that's how you would do that. And you can certainly set that up whenever you install Drake Accounting. That will be one of your installation options. The last item here is help. And this is where you can get to your patch notes, your online help, and all of these other various items. Um, so you want to make sure that you take a look at that whenever you're able. I'm going to wrap up our webinar today just by talking about some basic resources. So if you go to drakeaccounting.com, you'll see that we have online help and we also have Drake support on the right. That kind of tells you our hours and so that you kind of know when we are available, which is a lot, especially during tax season. And I did tell you how to get to the videos, which is on the home screen of Drake Accounting, but you can also get to the videos on our support site underneath training, and then you can access videos that way. Underneath support, there are a lot of valuable resources here knowledge bases. Um, I can't say enough about that. That is extremely useful. You can uh, select, I just want to look for, let's say, W-2s in Drake Accounting, and it will give you all the information you're looking for. The other item I want to point out to you is a Drake forum. This is a place uh, or an commu online community of Drake users where you can post your questions, kind of see what everybody else is talking about and see if you can learn from any of that. Um, our customers are absolutely the best. Um, if you are new to Drake Tax, welcome to the family. Um, we have, um, we just have a unique group of people. And you can see that whenever you attend a training or a Drake user conference or an update school or any, any kind of in-person training that we would offer. Uh, we have the most helpful customers. And um, I can tell you, you're never alone whenever you run into a snag or an issue. Somebody else may have had that same trouble 
and they can they will help you guide through it. They I mean we we will we are here to help you, but I'm telling you they are very resourceful and they are experienced and they are happy to help. Now, you probably found this webinar here, but I just want to point out to you, we will add to this um, as we kind of get through the year. But right now we have Introduction to Drake Accounting, Introduction to Drake Accounting Payroll will be re-recorded shortly, so um, it should be available uh, very soon for you to view. If you have any questions, um, we can certainly help you with those questions. Drake Accounting has its own support team. You can send an email to DAS, which stands for Drake Accounting Software, at drakesoftware.com. We also have our own Drake Accounting support number. So I highly advise you to not use the same one for Drake Tax. And the reason for that is we have a lots of different customer service personnel that are trained in various aspects of Drake software in general. Not everyone is cross-trained in Drake accounting, so the best way to get that the, your right person is to call this number and they would be happy to help you and guide you through that process. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you got a little preview of Drake Accounting and kind of what its abilities are and what it, what it can do for you. Um, again, if you have any questions, we're here to help you. Please reach out to us and um, we look forward to possibly seeing you this year at one of our trainings. All of that information should be published. Um, but usually after tax season, we have that information available and then we will look forward to seeing you in person. Have a great day.